Philippians chapter 1, starting in verse 3. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my request for all of you with joy. Here's why. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. That we get to do this together. Local Church Dawson, we get to be part of helping people know Jesus. We get to do that together. That's not just what I do. That's what we do. And we're part of that together. It's what Nehemiah got to see happen as they were rebuilding the wall and they were seeing spiritual renewal happen in their community. It wasn't just a Nehemiah thing. It wasn't just an Ezra thing. It was all of God's people coming together saying, we're in this together. We were partners in helping other people know who Jesus is, the truth of God's word, because that's how we learn about Jesus is through God's word. But as we've been saying, God's not done yet. Verse six, Paul writes, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Again, God's not done yet. We have been able to do exactly what we set out to do as a church. Our mission is the same as most churches. It's to lead people to fully follow Jesus. That's why we exist. It's what we do. It's the only thing that we really do is everything we do is to help people follow Jesus, to know him, to help explain it through not just teaching his word, but explaining and talking about his word. And then how do we begin to live his word out? Everything we do is to lead people to fully follow Jesus. And we are partners in that, but God's not done yet. See, a building has a lot to do with that. Again, Nehemiah and the walls, even for our church, these walls, we know that the walls are not the church. We know the building is not the church. No, we are the church, but the walls and the building or a facility is a great tool in living that mission out to lead people to fully follow Jesus. Can you do that without a building? Absolutely. But does it give people a place to gather, to read, to learn, and to respond to God's word? Absolutely. What happens inside these walls is super helpful because as we grow together and as our faith grows within these walls, it allows us to then go outside of these walls the rest of the week and to lead other people to fully follow Jesus, to help them understand what we just talked about within these walls. So yeah, like these walls are nothing fancy, nothing exciting, but yes, valuable. It's a great tool for ministry and a great tool to help us in doing exactly what we set out to do, to lead people to fully follow Jesus. So Nehemiah needed the walls, we need our walls, but we also recognize the hearts, is, the hearts of people are the focus. So now to the big exciting news. That's probably not very shocking to any of you unless you're here for the first time, then you have no idea this is coming. Uh, this is something we've been talking about for a long time. Truly, as, as you'll hear, years in the making, we've been talking through this and the importance of, yes, this facility, this building, and the future of our church. So here it is. The reason I've been blowing up your emails for the last three weeks is that as of today, we are officially moving forward with our plan to expand to the rest of the facility for our church and our ministry here at Local Church Dawson. There it is. So excited to be able to just say that out loud. We've been saying it in like our volunteer meetings. We've had our vision night and to be able to say that in front of all of you today. Um, so, so very excited. Now, some of you are immediately jumping to, well, how much does it cost and what's it going to look like? And what does this exactly mean? And why exactly are we doing this? And what, will you just hold your horses for a second? So hit pause on all your questions and let me just kind of walk you through how we got to this decision. Cause this was not a, Brian had an idea two weeks ago. Hey, let's, re let's build out the rest of our facility. As I said, it has been years in the making. So I want to walk you through a little bit of our church history and then obviously what that looks like today. And I'll give you some details. I promise I will answer most of your questions in the next 18 minutes. Um, and I think this part's important because all of you came in at different points throughout the story and history of our church. Again, some of you are here for the first time and have no idea what's going on. That's all right. We're going to catch you up. Some of you were with us at the very beginning. Some of you came when we were in the movie theater, when we moved here, like, and everywhere in between. And so your part in this story is super important, but I want you to see the whole thing. So uh, l let's go back into some of our history. We started our launch team July of 2014. Uh, we got people together. Becky and I and our family moved here and started asking people that lived around Dawson County, would you be with, join us as we start a church? And so you'll see our first launch team, not our church building. We were using our Forsyth location and just started getting people ready, prepped, and prayed up for what was going to happen in two months. 
We launched our very first, had our grand opening, first ever church service on Sunday. Uh, You'll see it there, September 7th, 2014 in the movie theater, uh, Dawson Movie Theater, now Regal Cinemas. We moved in there and turned a movie theater into a church every single Sunday. Worship in the auditoriums, kids spaces, student ministry spaces, all the things, baptisms out in the parking lot of the movie theater. It was an incredible time, took a ton of people, a lot of volunteers to just like within the story of Nehemiah, all in to get it all done. The things that it took to take a movie theater into a church Uh, Well, actually, it all fit in this one thing. Let me show you this. So here's the trailer we used. Everything church, as far as equipment and lighting and sound and kids stuff and student ministry stuff, coffee supplies, everything, every Sunday was loaded in and out of that trailer. And I do not miss that trailer at all. We had good times, don't get me wrong, but I don't miss that trailer um, at all. Kind of cool side story, when we moved into this building here, we actually donated that trailer to a church plant in San Diego. So they're doing some great things now. So the church planting continues. Uh, But we ran into a problem. About a year or so, a year and a half into us meeting at the movie theater, uh, we had moved different auditoriums or different size movie theaters over there, as you probably know. So we moved into their largest auditorium and we were still out of room. So our adult spaces were out of rooms. We had rented out multiple spaces within the, uh, for kids ministry and student ministry. And quite honestly, uh, there was more of us coming to church than we're showing up to the premiere Star Wars. Uh, so we were like, well, good problem to have, but still a problem. So we began to look very seriously at what else is there in this area. Used our board, our, our elder board, board of directors, whichever church background you come from, whatever language you want to use. Our leadership team, staff, many of you as volunteers, began to canvas the area and found this location. So in October of 2017, we signed a five-year lease for this building here, which used to be an old 84 lumber building that actually traded hands, and there's the lovely blue. I don't miss the trailer, and I don't miss that color blue. If you miss the blue, just go look on this side of the building. We didn't paint that side because it's cheaper not to paint it because you don't really see it. Um, See, we are good stewards with every dollar, I promise you. So, and and even where our old sign is, that's where the big 84 was. And uh, so we turned an old warehouse into a church and had great volunteers, great teams met here. And we did a lot of the the demo ourselves, did some of the construction ourselves, uh, helped us keep costs down. And again, all in to get it all done because God wasn't done with our church yet. My favorite part though of moving in here uh, was one Sunday we gave everybody at the movie theater a Sharpie, a black Sharpie and said, hey, meet us over at the new building. We've got something for you. So we had everybody come over with their Sharpies and we had people go all throughout the building on anywhere there was a wood stud, anything thing that was exposed, we had people write Bible verses and prayers all over. And so we called it Sharpie Sunday. So you just need, this is important that you know. We talk about the importance of God's word and the truths that are in God's word. Know that your church is literally and figuratively built on the truth of God's word because it is written all over this place, behind the sheetrock and underneath the paint and under the floors and under the stage and in kids areas and student areas. This place is covered in God's word. And that will continue to be the case. It's why we do what we do to lead people to fully follow Jesus through knowing the truths of God's word. So we officially moved in in November, almost four years to the date. So today is the 7th. We had our very first Sunday in this room right here on November 5th, 2017. We got our CO two days ahead of time. We were cutting a little bit close, but that's why I was super excited. So we moved everything in, all that trailer stuff got moved in over here. And like I said, moved in, had our very first Sunday. Within a year, we were finding ourselves in a very similar situation that we were in in the movie theater, running out of space yet again. So we moved to three services. Anybody here for the three services? 8, 15, 9, 30, and 11. So we started running three services as well. And uh, by 2019, we were having very real conversations again with our board, our elder board, board of directors, our leadership teams and staffing, and involved some architects into our conversation saying, We really need to figure out what to do with the rest of this space. Um, The church that we are using at what we would call church right now is only one third of this entire facility. And like I said, we had leased out the entire property. And uh, so by 2019, we were starting to get floor plans drawn, engaging architects, starting to have real conversations on cost and what it would take. And then this picture happened. So that is Easter Sunday of 2019. 
And you can see uh, we're in Overflow seating, which if you've ever had to sit in our lobby for Overflow, I apologize. I know it's terrible, but that's why we're having this conversation. Um, so you see people in the lobby, but this back part, do you see that bench? I don't know if you can see it in the back. Do you see that, that bench there? Right. Do you know where that bench is from? That's the women's bathroom bench. And the reason that's there is because on Easter Sunday, our guest services team found me and says, Brian, we literally don't have any more chairs. We don't have any more of the blue chairs. We don't have any more of the black chairs. We can't find anything else in this whole building that, use, that could be used as a chair. I said, check the bathrooms. And sure enough, there's this bench that they pulled out, and that was the last piece of seating that we were able to use, and people were still standing. So after Easter of 2019, we said, okay, we really need to move this thing forward. The plan by the end of 2019 was to have this conversation about raising funds to expand our building and build out our building. The plan was to do that spring of 2020. Yeah. Yeah. So March 15th of 2020 happened. That was our first uh, online only, and as you know how that went. But let me just say this about 2020. Regardless of the highs and lows that you personally have experienced, uh, that you experienced through 2020, let me just say, uh, from my perspective, specifically with our church, God showed up in amazing ways. Amazing ways. For us as a church, hearing stories of how God used you and one another to help each other, we truly were the church. When we were not physically meeting within the walls, we got to see what it really looked like to be the church. And we also understood the importance and the value of having these walls to be able to gather and do what we're able to do today. So God was so good during 2020. Obviously, we hit pause on all of our plans. And then we get into 2021, early this year, filling up again, running out of space again, and especially in our kids' ministry, student ministry areas. Um, our student ministry team said, hey, we need some more space. And I said, well, let me see what I can do. Um, I found a storage closet. So if you go down the bathrooms, there's an old storage closet there. I said, hey, I can turn a storage closet into a student room. And they're like, okay, great. We'll take what you can give us. And uh, so at that point, it's like, okay, we really need to have this conversation again. So early this year, met again with our board of directors, our leadership teams, and our staff, and we set out to have two goals for this year. The first one is to purchase this property. Said we had a five-year lease. Uh, the goal was to purchase this building and this property. And the second was to have this conversation. To say, what does it look like to really have a plan and to begin raising funds and money so that we can actually afford to build out the rest of the facility? Pleased to say that we checked one of those off the, uh, checked one of those boxes on, I love God's timing, Good Friday of this year, so April of 2021, we signed the documents and closed and purchased this property, building and the whole 10 acres on Good Friday. I just thought that was super cool. So we're able to check that one. And then we had a lot more conversations and intentionality around this conversation of what do the floor plans look like? What is it really going to take? Involving people to come up with some kind of gauge and estimate on cost, uh, which again brings us to our conversation and the exciting news of today. Now, before I get into all the the what's it going to look like and cost, and I know you detail people are freaking out on me, so hold on. Um, let Let me speak to the why. Like, why do this? You know, I love the size of our church and those of you that hate change and like, it's just good the way that it is. I'm going to help you understand why it's not so good the way that it is. But let me say this first before I dive into that. The goal is not to just keep building bigger buildings. Please hear me. That's not the heart behind this. We have an incredible property that God has truly worked to get us to here. And there's a whole other day of talking through all the God moments that got us here with this property. So we just want to be a good steward with every square foot. Right now, we're only using a third of this facility for ministry and church. We want to use 100% of it for church and ministry and community, which let me talk about that. So here's the why we're doing this and why now's the right time for it. Uh, The first one is just kind of stating the obvious. It's to create more room for more life change. Like I said, we are just truly out of space, like literally out of space. Um, here in this room, we're out of space. Our kids' ministry, student ministry, like I said, I, we turned a storage closet into a student room. There's no more closets and storage areas that I'm allowed to put kids and students in on our property. Should, should put students. Not allowed. That sounded better. That sounded worse than I intended for it to be. <laughs> We're literally out of space. And so we just need to expand to accommodate who's already here. But obviously we wanna continue to reach more people and lead more people to Jesus. The second one is the most important aspect of this project. It's to improve our kids and student ministry environments. How many parents do I have of kids or students that are in here? Like truly, I wanna see how many are in the room. Good chunk of you. So you know, as well as I know, that the rooms that they're in are not adequate. 
like not even close to adequate. Right out here, we have a student ministry, a middle school ministry that's meeting, our clubhouse that's meeting that takes care of our volunteer kids and has a great program for them, and our fourth and fifth grade ministry. All of them are right next to each other with no ceilings. You see problems with that. You know how loud your kids are at home, right? Imagine trying to teach them age-appropriate truths from God's word when they hear all these other things are going. It doesn't work. Our middle school ministry is unable to have worship in their environments because of the sound and the space issues. So they're just nowhere near adequate. If you don't believe me on that, stick around. I'm going to take you a tour on our kids' area, and I will point on everything that's wrong with it. Now, the perfect thing about our kids' and student spaces are the people that are there. We have the best kids team, we have the best student team, and they do miracles with what we're able to give them right now. But we can do much, much better, church. So we are gonna improve those ministry environments big time. The third one, the last one, is to have a facility that truly can be used by our community. Right now, our facility is great for us as a church, it's, it's okay for us as a church, obviously the improvements, but the size and the layout is not helpful for our community. And we truly want to be useful for our community. We use our church on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, Sunday morning for everything that's happening now, students on Sunday night. We have Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays that I would love for this space to be used for ministry throughout the week. Now, it is on somewhat. We, we partner with Young Life. They rent it out from us free of charge on Monday nights, so that's happening. That's great. Tuesday nights is our CR, Celebrate Recovery Ministry. Woo! They are here every single Tuesday night helping anybody with hurts, habits, and hang-ups. It's our recovery ministry, so that's on Tuesday nights. Wednesday nights is kind of a placeholder for, for Bible studies, but then we, we have a lot of time and a lot of space that could get used for ministry. I'll just say this. I'm real involved with Chamber of Commerce and Rotary of Dawson County, and, and we do a lot of events for the community. And the last, the most recent event we had a couple weeks ago, great event, big, big well-attended event, but there was no space in Dawson County that could, that could host that event. So you know what we had to use? We used the food court at the outlet mall we can do better. I was like, I want to host that. I want to be available as our church and our space to be able to host for different people, organizations, businesses, and events so that, you know what? We get them inside the walls and maybe just maybe they get a glimpse of who Jesus is. So let's use our facility for more than just church on Sunday. Let's do ministry seven days a week and we need a facility that can do it. So there's the why. Are you finally ready for the what it's going to actually look like? I mean, I can skip the floor plan. I don't, I mean, I've seen it. You guys want to see it? All right. All right. Let's see it. All right. Here's the floor plan. Now, if you were part of any of our volunteer meetings or even our vision nights, you have not seen this yet because I got this on Thursday from our architects. So this is obviously uh, adjusting literally as we're walking through it. So let me briefly walk you through what you are looking at here. Um, you are all sitting in this room. This is our current auditorium. Here's the doors you walked in today. Uh, the church as you know it is just this L right here. Bathrooms are back here, kids area here, and then a little student space here. So this is all that you know. You can see that we're uh, taking on not just the third, but the whole thing. Um, let me walk you through what it will look like. Here's your new entrance, which is if you come down on this side, there'll be an entrance on the side of the building. Walk in lobby. The lobby space is super important to us. I tell you often to leave slowly. Community happens outside of this room. So we want to make sure that you have space in the lobby to stick around, mingle, and actually talk and meet with people. Uh, you can see the auditorium. It's one big box with chairs, nothing fancy there. Um, truly, like we don't do fancy. The focus on this is mainly for our kids and student ministry, but you got to make sure you got enough space for adults as well. See, I do care about you. I just care about them more. Um, so let's talk about the kids space. That's more exciting. So over here, first notice, there is a secure entry in and out. That's the only way in and the only way out. We do the best with what we can here with volunteers, security team, tags, the whole thing, uh, but we can and will do better. Uh, we need the facility to do so. So secure entrance in and out. You only get in there if you are a parent with a tag or a guardian with a tag with your kid or a volunteer with a tag. That's the only way you'll get through those doors. You walk in here. Uh, this right here where you're sitting now becomes our elementary or K through three, kindergarten, first, second, third grade, large group meeting space. So where they worship, where they do their videos and their games and fun, uh, they do that all together, large group. And then they have their small group room. So kindergarten room, first grade, second grade, third grade, because the biblical truth that we share with them needs to be explained in an age appropriate way. We can't just throw them in one room and expect them to learn it and understand it and apply it. So just like we read from Nehemiah, they explained it. 
We need to do that in age-specific and age-appropriate rooms. Uh, this whole section back here is your um, pre-K. So there's your like birth, ones, twos, threes. Pre-K is right there. Resource room, that's just where like crafts are made. It's, they need it, but you don't care about it, and that's all right. Um, we're real excited about this here. This is a sensory room, speci specifically so that we can up our special needs ministry and programming. That's a big deal for us as we tell everyone about Jesus. Clubhouse, we keep that, again, um, a program for our volunteer kids. Right here is our fourth and fifth grade auditorium. Uh, that's a new program for us within the last couple years that we want to keep getting better and better. Fourth and fifth graders are a weird bunch. Like, they're not middle schooler like teenagers yet, but they're, they're too cool for elementary. And so again, trying to be age appropriate, how we can best teach them the truths of God's word. So they have that. Down here is all student ministry, which like, I don't know, times 10 what they're currently dealing with. So that'll be a super big bump for them, a space as well as an auditorium with a stage and allow them to have worship as well that's appropriate for them. Notice students do not go through secure check-in. Students are part of the lobby as well there. One other thing I want to point out to you is this here. You can't read that, but what that says is porch. And here's what we're doing with that. So you know down on the far end where there's the loading dock, dips down, we're gonna fill all that in. It'll still be exposed, but we'll turn that into what we'll kind of call like a front porch idea. Again, a place to be after or before church. Community, I said it once, I'm gonna say it again. Community happens outside of this room. So we wanna have spaces that are still ministry focused, but can be utilized for you to meet other people and to have community. Again, it's not just the walls, but it's what's happening inside of those walls um, that makes a big difference as well. The only thing we don't have yet, we're still working on, is the exterior plan. Uh, so there are some things that we need to do externally uh, that are just like no-brainers, like getting the, the electrical wires to go under the ground instead of over top. We need to move some things around, obviously resurface and, and work on our parking lot. A few exterior things, nothing major, but we do need to do some work on the exterior, which this project will help us do that um, as well. So that's the what. Now let's talk about the when. When would this happen, Brian? So glad you asked. Um, I'm going to say this is our prayerful plan. Everybody hear me say prayerful? Okay. So that means it doesn't necessarily happen the way that we want. We're going to trust God's timing on this. But the soonest we could do this, which is what we're going to aim for, is to begin construction September of 2022. So next year, next fall. The reason for that is one, we need some time to raise some money. We do not have to have all of it up front. We need to have enough to at least begin, be able to start. We also lease out to another company, another business back behind this wall. He takes up two thirds of that warehouse or this facility. Um, so his lease ends August of 2022. So we're gonna be a good landlord, a good neighbor. We're gonna let him finish out his lease. And then he already knows we're not gonna renew that lease. So he moves out in August and then we move our construction equipment in, begin work in September. That's the plan. But again, um, we all know how plans go. So we will be flexible as, as we go through it. So let me be clear on the ask. Like, what is this? Is great, Brian, super excited. I said before, it's not just exciting news, but it's also um, all in to get it all done. It's going to take all of it. So here's your part in that. Let me explain. Uh, first is just pray, truly. We saw that in Nehemiah. It wasn't just, ooh, I need to get to work. It was, hey, let's pray. Let's make sure we're never missing the whole God part of this. Like it's the movement of God moving through people. That's been part of the history of our church. It's not just people doing whatever they wanted whenever they felt like it. It's no God moving and moving through people, moving through you. So we're going to stay true to that. So please, truly pray for what's next for our church. Pray for the details and all the other things that are going to have to happen over the next couple years. The second part is where you get to have this conversation with the Lord. Not with me, with the Lord. You ask this question, God, what's my financial part over the next two years? That's it. What's my financial part over the next two years? It is most certainly going to take all of us. This is a big next step. It's going to cost a lot of dollars, which means either one person writes one really big check. You didn't hear me. One person can write one really big check. You laugh because you can't do it. That's okay. If you didn't laugh, let's talk later. And I'm dead serious. Uh, the... <laughs> The, real, the reality of it is we're all going to do this together. And quite honestly, that's what I would prefer. Like we're a church, we do things together. Just like Nehemiah, all in to get it all done. So let's do this together. The amount that you and your family and God come up with is between you and God, right? I'm concerned, I'm, I'm praying that we all participate together, that every single family in our church says, yeah, I'm in this. And how much you're in, that's between you and the Lord, not 
not for me. So with that, let me explain a little bit more on those details. I've got my team, uh, guest services, they're going to be passing out two things for you. Uh, you've got a white envelope that they're going to hand you, and then they're going to hand you this little booklet. So I'll be quiet, let them hand those out just for a second, and I'll explain and walk you through each of them. If we missed you, just make sure our team knows. We'll make sure we get, get you what you need. The booklet that they're passing out is basically what I just told you just in uh, print. You will notice the floor plan is already outdated in this. Like I said, this is evolving. This is adjusting as we're going through it. Um, we're trying to move as quick as we can, but obviously want to make the right decision. So um, some, I'll explain some ways you can get some more information. But look through that. That will explain those things. Uh, the envelope, let's talk about that. So if you open up that envelope, you're going to get a card. This is the commitment card. So this is you answering that question, God, what is my financial part over the next two years? Let me explain how my family approached this. Maybe it's helpful for you. Go to the side of the card that has all the dollar amounts on it. You got like the, the two-year amounts total. You've got how it's broken out, down into monthly. Here's my suggestion. This is just a suggestion, right? So when you look at those numbers, um, probably the first thought in your head is like, whoa, can't do that one is probably where some of you are. But most likely all of us, our eyes are going to go to one of those numbers that, that feels a little bit comfortable. And if it's not a number other, there's a number in your head that you're like, hey, that feels pretty comfortable. Like, okay, yeah, we want to be part of this. We believe in this. We believe that God's moving here. So here's what I think we can do. And just naturally, all of our eyes go to one of those numbers, right? So here's the conversation Becky and I had as we did. And we've already filled ours out. We turned ours in a month ago. So here's what I would say to you. Would you be willing to do a little bit more than just what's comfortable, right? And here's why I say that. Again, the, the dollar amount is between you and the Lord, but I care about your faith and your spirituality, right? I'm kind of like the Ezra of the Nehemiah and Ezra story, where I'm looking at you as like, but I want your faith to grow and I want you to allow God to stretch you and grow you over these next two years. So if we just do what is comfortable, there's not a lot of stretching and growth that happens there. But when we say, okay, here's what's comfortable, oh, now we're getting a little uncomfortable. That requires us to take a step that, as we say, causes us to have a deeper faith, a more de dependent and trusting and reliant relationship with Jesus. So yes, you can give what's comfortable, and great, we're going to build a building, but I don't want it to just be about the walls. I want it to be about your faith growing too. And in order for your faith to grow, there has to be a level of stretching. You have to allow God to stretch you and deepen your faith where you trust and rely more on him. So that's a prayer for you to have. I'm happy to walk you through that, explain that scripturally on how God stretches us. But would you prayerfully consider not just what's comfortable, but what is going to take some trust? What's going to take some stretching? What's going to take some sacrifice in order to allow God to build your faith, grow your faith through this project over the next couple years. On the flip side of that, um, you'll see the, uh, how the commitments are totaled up. Again, the project total is a $2 million project over the next two years. That is not $2 million first year, $2 million second year. That is $2 million over the next two years. We, um, we're expecting this project to be right at $2 million to do everything that we have stated um, and shared with you. So let me walk you through how the commitments work. The first blank in there is my first gift. This might be something that you're doing specifically coming up on the end of the year. Maybe that's extra bonuses. Maybe that's just something you and your family do each Christmas. Hey, we donate X amount of dollars at the end of the year. It's above and beyond what you would normally give to organizations or charities. So if you want to do that, you write that in that first one. I'm going to give this amount here, 
but I'm not going to give that same amount every single week or every single month. So I'm going to give a one-time gift of, and maybe you have an amount there, but then I would encourage you to also commit to giving regularly, whether that's every week, whether that's monthly, or whether that's yearly. What does that amount look like? And then you have a third option for non-cash items or non-cash assets. Uh, there's a whole other conversation we can have around this. And if you want to, I'll be happy to talk with you and connect you with our, our business administrator or our CFO of our church. But if you have stocks and bonds and other non-cash items that you'd like to donate, don't sell them on your own because you'll be taxed on them. So donate them, give them to the church. And then when we sell them, there's no taxes on them. So a lot of other conversations and ins and outs with those, but know that that's an option if you choose to go that route. So you take your first gift, your regular committed giving weekly, monthly, or yearly. And then if you have any other non-cash gifts, and then you have your total, um, and then you sign it because that's important between you and your family. This does not go to me. I will never see these. I will never know these. Uh, this is between you and the Lord and our finance team. <laughs> and so if you can mail these in, they're already pre-addressed. You need to just throw a stamp on them, or you can put them in the boxes um, at any point on a Sunday morning, drop them in there. And uh, as we get into December, I'll keep you posted on here's where we're at on commitments, and here's how much more we need committed, and here's how many families have said we're into this, and we'll keep you posted on, on all the progress. Progress, uh, throughout, throughout our time. If you're somebody that needs a deadline, well, when do you need these back, Brian? Um, I would tell you, oh, I mean, whenever you and God have that conversation, um, I would suggest it's probably not going to take you more than a month. Um, I mean, you probably, again, you have a number, but I'm asking you to have a prayerful conversation with your family and God about what that looks like being stretched a little bit. And so I'm, if you need a date, put December 5th on there. That's the first Sunday of December. If you want to have those back by December 5th, great. If you need a lot longer than that, by all means. Um, there's not a hard deadline on that. We'll be talking about this a lot. We have a lot of new families that come each and every Sunday, so I'll be catching them up. So uh, please hear, when you hear me talk about this every Sunday, it's not to keep hitting what you already know. It's to talk to the people that don't know what you know. <laughs> and so we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to be part of this and that their face can get, begin to grow through it as well. Like I said, we saw it with Nehemiah. The, the walls are not the main part of this. Like I don't get overly excited about the walls and the paint and the floors. I get excited about what happens and the faith that grows within the walls, the conversations and the Bible studies and what we're doing now and in our kids' ministry and student ministry. That's what I get excited about over the next two years for this project is not just to have more walls and more room, but it's more walls, more room for more life change so more people can be led to Jesus and have a relationship with him. So I'm sure I didn't answer all of your questions. Hopefully I got most of them. Um, take a screenshot or write this down. Here's a couple other ways to get the information you need. First of all, uh, if you go to the website that launched last night, godsnotdoneyet.com, you'll get all the information that I just handed you. You'll see updated floor plans. Every time we get an updated floor plan, we'll throw it on there as well. Um, once we start getting commitments in, we'll update progress there. You can give right there online. You can make a digital commitment. If you so have something against pen and paper, uh, you can do all of that stuff stuff online, godsnotdoneyet.com. Uh, you also have my email and my phone number. So if you're someone's like, well, how'd you get the $2 million number? And what GCs are you using? And what about this? And have you thought about this? And how? I will answer all those questions for you. I would love to have coffee, phone call, sit down conversation. I'll, th I'll show you all of our conversations, all of our plans and where we're at today. Just know that this is a work in progress. We don't have it all solidified, but uh, we needed to start raising the funds for it so we can get going as soon as uh, we're ready to go next year. So we've been going through Nehemiah. And I'll just tell you, I relate more to Nehemiah than I do anybody else in the Bible. Like take Moses, for example. Moses heard from God and it was like the burning bush moment of Moses, go do this. I never have gotten that. But I relate to Nehemiah in the sense that God broke his heart for something that was broken. Specifically, Nehemiah's heart broke for his community and his people. And I can tell you that's the same for me. God has broken my heart, my family's heart, and I think you would agree with me that God has broken your heart for the people of our church and the people of our community, the place that he has us in. Let's maximize that. Let's be good stewards. Let's use every square foot of our space and every second of our day leading other people to Jesus. What Jesus has given us, can we point other people towards him as well? That's the heart behind this two-year campaign. At the end of two years, yes, we'll have raised $2 million, and yes, we'll have built or, or added on or uh, rebuilt the rest of this facility. But you know what's really going to be fun celebrating is your faith that grew over the next two years. So yes, let's build some walls and let's put some paint in. Let's give our kids and students the space that they need. 
Let's give us the space that we need for our community. But let's allow God to grow our faith in the process. And that, that is what I get excited about, of what God is gonna do in you over the next two years because he's not done yet. Let's pray together and see what God's gonna do in and through us over the next couple years with this. God, thank you so much for what we get to be part of. Thank you so much for inviting us to be part of something like this. This is a big deal for our church. This is a huge next step for our church. $2 million over the next two years is, is, is big for us. But God, we know that you're bigger. And we know that you have been faithful every single step along the way through the history of our church and in each of our individual lives. We could tell story after story of all that you've done for us and through us. And God, we know without a doubt that you are not done yet. You're not done with us personally and individually. You're not done with our families and you're not done with our church. So God, I pray that we would seek you individually as we have done so as a church. That we would ask you that question, God, what is my part in all of this? We see time and time again on how you choose to use your people to accomplish incredible things for your kingdom, not for us. It's not the name on the side of the building that we tell people about. It's you we tell people about. So Jesus, would you prompt us through your Holy Spirit? What is our part? How can we be all in to get this done as we lead people to fully follow you? using the space that we've been given, using the time that you give us, the relationships that we have around us, the community that you've placed us in. Would you use these walls and the future walls to come? Would you use this place to be a place where people not just know about you, not just learn about you, but grow in their faith and relationship with you? Thanks for what we get to be part of. And we look forward to what you're gonna do next. In Jesus' name, amen.